the formidable robot. Enough of the usual introductions, you know who it is. It's getting old. It's been five months since the two incidents. At this point, I was diagnosed with depression, anxiety, and PTSD. Nickelodeon Studios had me work at home due to my diagnosis and promised to keep their promise on sending their work to my way via email or packages. Everything seemed to be going fine, well, I wish it was going fine. Something unexpected yet horrifying shattered my reality. I had to keep repeating the phrase I thought we were done over and over again. Unlike the last time where it was a VHS tape, this time, someone sent me a DVD from work. The cover had a purple cloudy background with a new name, In the Mouth of Chaos. Odd. I asked one of my buddies, Vladimir Prothshamovsky, on the episode. Accordingly, he said that the episode was in development during the period of 2006 to 2008, before being canned, dubbing the episode as, Another Godforsaken Eldritch Stain. Who knew? Anyways, after inserting the DVD into my laptop, I checked for viruses. Clean, as always. My hand was already trembling, getting ready to click on the play button. Come on, you've got to do this. I said to myself, as I joined a call with two animators, two sound designers, and one of the sound designers. Let's go. It started with the title card. A faceless Spongebob with a crooked smile and the eyes replaced with the title card, in the mouth of chaos. After a minute of staring at the title card, purple loud thick bubbles were heard, replacing the bubble transition. It shows a corrupted world. Every fish were covered with eyes, some with gooey melting mouths, like from the Matrix, some were aimlessly wandering, others were following a group with dark purple hoods. The hooded figures approached a huge purple throne. Sitting there were Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward, all three of them still with multiple eyes and spoke that same goddamn sickening tone, but it made it worse because it sounded eldritch-like, almost. All of the hooded figures sat down. Squidward snapped his fingers before announcing, Mortals and newcomers, we gather round for the sacrificial lamb to be killed by the two monstrous beasts of our kind. SpongeBob and Patrick came in with two cages covered by a purple cloth. May I introduce to you all, two of our creations, straight from up above. Squidward said, as the two took off the covers. The first was monstrous. A beastly monarch butterfly beast, almost like Warney, but something was off. It was white, had sharper teeth, and when the close-up appeared, it let out a monstrous hiss. I nearly passed out when the close-up appeared. But I gathered myself and kept a firm grip on the chair. People dubbed the creature as Onyxath, a Lovecraftian name. But the next was worse. As it showed the next close-up, a purple monstrous gorilla with tentacles that looked like the one from I had an accident. This time, as the close-up appeared, it let out a huge, speaker-shaking eldritch-like roar. <laughs> Given, the other name of the beast. A common name, but a name nonetheless. The sacrificial lamb came, and everyone screamed. It was Sandy and Plankton. Each of them were battered and bruised. Squidward held out two tentacles. Which of these shall go to whom, Onyctath or Gibbon? Choose wisely, mere mortals. Fate is in their balance. People started making decisions before Squidward held a tentacle up. We have got a split decision. Let's go with the latter. Plankton to Onyctath, and Sandy to Gibbon. As the two unchained the two, Plankton and Sandy screamed as the two stared at the two beasts staring back at them. Onyctath let out a loud screech before grabbing Plankton and tearing him in half, before eating him. <coughs> Sandy got the worse. Gibbon picked up Sandy, letting out another ear-shattering roar before shoving Sandy into his mouth. <coughs> Loud, I mean loud, crunching was heard before blood oozed out of their mouths. <laughs> the 
this is but a decision of their own. Hail to the anarchy of the eldritch beasts! Squidward said, putting their tentacles in an X pose. Everyone did the same. Hail to the anarchy! Everyone said, with varying evil voices. Let this be a lesson to all who dismantle our words! Squidward said ominously. Suddenly, Onyctath made one last jump scare with the close-up before the episode ended. <coughs> we thought it was over before it showed the Nickelodeon logo. A purple splat that looked like the one from the last episode. We were done with this shit. We immediately left the call and immediately asked for our paychecks before immediately leaving the studio. We were coming off as the crazy one when each of the episodes kept lingering with us and kept us following. We all agreed to never discuss the episodes nor the experiences again. Except for Glenn Keegan who explained to write the episodes out to share our story. I've been sharing these experiences because it feels like no one wants to hear my stories. But now that I'm talking about them, I'm keeping the experiences and staying low, because if I don't, who knows if it'll come back to bite me in the ass. One last thing. On March 14, 2017, the episode was found on a Japanese bootleg SpongeBob DVD as a bonus episode. It was reported that the DVD was later burned to ash during a mysterious fire. <laughs>